that's cool. Geofencing is super, super powerful. Have you ever been geofenced? You may not even know what geofencing is, and that's why you clicked on this video. I'm making this video today because I want to teach you guys how to capture more customers with geofencing. But here's the catch, the ethical way. There are people out there using it the wrong way. We're going to talk about the do's and don'ts, but I'm going to talk about what geofencing is and how you can use it, the different types of campaigns there are in your business. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I know you came here today because you want to know how you can use geofencing inside of your business and apply this tactic and the strategy. So what is geofencing? Well, the simple explanation is it's a virtual perimeter around a business, a location, uh, maybe it's your competitor's business, and you draw this virtual perimeter with the technology that's out there now and the platforms that they have out there, and anybody that crosses into that virtual perimeter is going to get a notification on their phone. Now, as soon as they leave that perimeter, you're still going to be able to track them. It's actually gonna track what's called an exit event, which we'll get into later in this video, but it's a virtual perimeter around a business's geographical location, a virtual fence. So with geofencing, you can actually create a locally targeted marketing campaign for all the people that have actually crossed into that geofence. For 30 days, up to 30 days, you can track these people, send them ads, advertise to them, market to them. This is a really powerful tool to be able to do that, especially when they're going into, let's just say, a competitor's location. And it's not only gonna track them going into the perimeter, but also and into the fence, but it's also gonna track the exit event. So there's entrance events and there's exit events, and it's gonna track both of those. And you can actually get as detailed as tracking the conversions from when they actually become a client and attribute the geofencing campaign specifically to that conversion. That's pretty powerful. The technology that actually powers geofencing is GPS, RFID, cellular data, and even Wi-Fi. These are all technologies that are used for geofencing. And nowadays, you don't even need to have an app on your phone. In fact, there are a ton of apps that do have this built in their technology. And to put the number on it, which we're gonna do here in a few minutes, it'll blow your mind. So like I said, there's no actual app that you need to have on your phone. Most of the phones have the geofencing built into the already existing apps. The only thing that needs to happen is you gotta have a smartphone with your location services turned on. You can actually find geofencing functionality with the location services incorporated into more than 600,000 apps. Domino's, Walmart, Uber, Nest, these are all geofencing technologies that are used all the time, and you don't even have to have one of those apps. It can even be within your Google Chrome browser. So the geofencing technology is everywhere. It's probably more prominent than you even ever realize, and it's something that you should be using within your business if you have the budget for it. All right, so now that you understand what geofencing is, I got that hard stuff out of the way. We're gonna talk about some more fun stuff and some things you should and shouldn't do. But first, I got a favor. If you could please hit that like button on this video and hit the subscribe button so you get notified of all of our videos if you haven't already, that would be a huge support to me and a thank you for the content that we're creating here to help you guys. So let's go ahead and jump in to the next piece. So I came up with six just off the top of my head. I was just doing a little bit of research, but a lot of these were already at the top of my head. And I wanted to give you guys these six ways, six campaign types for geofencing that you can apply within your own business. So the first one is events. Let's just use this example. Say you're a hardcore gamer, you play Call of Duty or you do some esports stuff. Well, what you could do is they do these esports conferences all the time, I'm sure less during the pandemic, but they do these conferences all the time where they have these events where everybody gathers together. You could geofence that specific event on those specific days that the event is gonna be held and everybody that goes into that event during that time is gonna be added to your audience and you're gonna be able to geofence and target them and send marketing messages, not just the notification, but once they click on the notification, you can retarget. There's all kinds of things that you can do with that, but you are going to be able to reach your target audience. So say you wanna reach gamers, then go geofence a gaming conference. Maybe it's the eSports Arena in Las Vegas, who knows? So this is a really good opportunity, events, things like that, this is really good because you're gonna only geofence for a specific amount of days. I actually did one of these for a cannabis expo in Las Vegas a few years back. 
The second type of campaign that you can do are conferences or trade shows. You got the 10X conference, you got Funnel Hacking Live, you got our events that are gonna be coming up. People can actually geofence those specific trade shows and events as well. They kind of fall into events, but trade shows and conferences, you can geofence them, you can reach those people, you can put, put specific messaging that's actually going to attract them. And I've been able to do this multiple occasions with multiple clients and actually trade show booths and trade show events for roofing companies. There are lots of different ways to go about this, but geofencing at events, conferences, and trade shows is the way to go. Now, the third one is actual business locations. Now, this can be a little touchy. This is gonna go into a little bit of the do's and don'ts. With business locations, you can geofence your competitor. So let's just say you're a T-Mobile store. Let's, see, let's forget that. Let's just say your competitor is the T-Mobile store and you're a Verizon store. You own your own Verizon franchise, whatever, authorized dealer, and you wanna geofence all of your competitors with some sort of special or promotion that you have going on. You can geofence the T-Mobile across the street and say, hey, switch from T-Mobile and we'll give you $500 and a new phone you can actually send that messaging to those people as soon as they cross into that border and market to them for the next 30 days. That's a pretty big deal. There's not a lot of businesses, not a lot of technology out there that allows you to do that. Another kind of geofencing, and this is actually one that I found by doing some research, is Amazon lockers. You know, when you go to the grocery store or certain places now, sometimes Walmart and Target, they actually have these lockers. I think Kohl's has them, but they have these lockers where they actually have that technology built into them. So when you're passing by, it says, hey, don't forget to pick up your package here from Amazon. So the Amazon lockers have that geofencing technology in it so that when your phone gets close enough to one of those lockers, it reminds you that you have a package to pick up inside there. I haven't used those Amazon lockers myself. Maybe you have, if you have, I'm curious to know. You can drop a comment about it below, but that's another situation, another campaign type for geofencing. Your next one here, and this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, is your competitors, whether it's their physical location or a specific area, like if they're doing landscaping, you target a specific neighborhood, you can geofence an entire neighborhood and message all the people, your competitors. Now you wanna do this ethically. You don't wanna bash anybody. You don't wanna talk down of anybody, but if you make a compelling offer, an irresistible offer and they switch, good job on you. So I wanna make sure that you understand that when it comes to geofencing specific location, there are some bad places that you wanna geofence and some good places. And I'm gonna talk about that here in a minute, but I wanna to get to this last one first. The last one is appliances. Now this one absolutely blew my mind. I couldn't believe this when I heard this. Did you know that your appliances now have geofencing capabilities? So let's just say you have the app for your smart refrigerator on your phone, whatever smart device that is, LG, Samsung, whatever that is. When you get a certain distance to the grocery store, your phone can send you a geofence notification that you need to get more milk if you're low on milk. For me, it'd be oat milk, but I don't know why that's important, but I just thought I would share that with you because I don't drink regular milk, but your appliances are so smart nowadays that they can even geofence. So geofencing is becoming more and more of a part of our life. It's really important that you utilize geofence to grow your business, especially if you have a good marketing budget. And this is just something I wanted to share with those six things. So the next important piece when it comes to geofencing is targeting the specific radius. You can get within feet. I think it's like 25 to 30 feet within a location and maybe even less than that last time I checked, but you can actually target those people within a very, very close distance of that location. And then you can actually track them and track the conversions. As I mentioned at the beginning of this, what are called conversion zones. This is gonna help you with loyalty, with rewards, with promotions, surveys. It's gonna track the entrance event and it's also gonna track that exit event that I talked about. And then you can even give people a survey when they're exiting the thing, say, hey, how was your experience with us? How did you like it? Get a $10 gift card if you give us a review, right? There is a minimum budget that I want you to have and I want you to think about when it comes to geofencing. It's not cheap. You need to be able to reach a certain amount of people. You're gonna be targeting them for 30 days. So you need to have a decent marketing budget, an advertising budget, towards geofencing. Technically, geofencing is an advertising campaign, and that monthly budget needs to be at least $1,000 a month because the average cost to geofence can be anywhere from $2 on the low side, it's very rare when you get it that low, and as high as $10, and it's really rare when you get it that high, but events can be more on the expensive side, especially you wanna be more prominent against your competitors, and that's for 1,000 impressions. So it's two to $10 for every 1,000 impressions. So if there's 30,000 people at an event and you wanna reach them and send them a message four or five times, you just do the math, it can add up really quickly. Now, one of the things that I wanna make sure that I walk away and you walk away from this video on, things that you cannot do and should not do when it comes to geofencing. You could do them, but this would be super unethical and this is one of the main points I wanted to give you guys today. 
uh, in terms of what you should and shouldn't geofence, and that's hospitals, funerals, and churches. I believe, and this is just my personal belief, my moral compass, that it is unethical, and I consider it preying on people that are in pain. And that is just never right, never the right thing to do. So don't do that. Churches, hospitals, and funerals, funeral locations, those are off limits. Do not geofence them. This is not the cool thing to do, and it's not ethical. So go after the things that you know are the right thing to do. If you have to second guess yourself, it's probably not the right thing. So here's the question. Now that I've shared all this stuff with you, have you ever been geofenced? I'm sure there are now a couple ideas coming to mind of times that you've been geofenced. Drop a comment below, tell me when that was, where that was, if it was recently, if it was a long time ago, it doesn't have to be too detailed, but tell me if you remember what type of geofence it was and where that was. So that wraps up geofencing. I hope this was super helpful for you. I really wanted to give you some understanding and some foundations when it came to geofencing and how it can be used for you or for your clients. It's something you should be really looking at. The event side is highly profitable if you do it right. I'm gonna be using geofencing. I'm using it here at my office. I'm gonna be implementing it more and more into my business. It's just something I wanna encourage you guys to do as well. So thank you guys so much for watching another video. I'm Adrian Boysell. I'll see you guys on the next one. And as always, keep looking up.